Hello, cheap skaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheap Skates Club, where our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up, and laughing. Whoops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. I've got a few different things going on here tonight, so I need to be on the ball. Um, before we get started, I have to say thank you to Helen for the happy mail. Now, I don't know whether she watches the videos or not. I'll post it over on Cheapskate's chatter too. But it was a lovely surprise in the post office box and everything will be put to good use. I'm always amazed at just how generous cheapskaters are. And look, I know I don't like surprises. I say I don't like surprises. But that was a really lovely surprise. So thank you, Helen, very, very much. Oh, I hope everyone on the sick list is feeling better. And on the mend, getting back on your feet. It has been a hard winter, a hard, hard winter. And there's still a few weeks of it to go. So who knows what will happen? Okay. Now. I'll give everyone just another couple of minutes to join us and then we'll get started. Now, don't forget, if you um, would like to join the live chat tonight, we'd love to have you, but you need to be logged into your YouTube channel or your Gmail account. If you don't have one of those, yeah, no problem. You can leave a comment in the comments um, box below me. Now, I read every comment every comment, the good comments, the bad comments, I read them all. And I do my best, if there's a question in there, to answer the question. <laughs> and I try to um, have some response to comments too. Just bear with me because sometimes there's a lot of comments and there's only one of me and there's only 24 hours in a day. Um, but I do read every comment because I like to know what you think too. Because I sit here in my kitchen or the craft room or, or wherever I am and I just waffle on and I tell you my opinion, I'd like, I'd like to get your feedback. I'd like to know what you think too. Now on that note, if anything I say scares you, ask yourself why. Do your research. Find out about what I'm talking about but don't be scared. Just keep preparing. Okay, now let's see. We're 7.33, so let me zip over here like this. See if I can do this on the fly, because you never know with me, do you? We'll go up here to comments, and I can see who's with us tonight. And, oh, quite a few people. Wow, great. Guys, um, thumbs up is much appreciated. If you click that thumbs up, we really appreciate it. It really helps our channel. Um, become um, more easy to find on YouTube. And if our channel is easy to find, we can spread the message that it's okay to live like cheapskates. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a great way to live. So let's say hello to Yvonne, Jody, Kerry, Selena, Estelle. Um, I lost my Jeeva Wacky What's It? Uh, Margaret, uh, if you have a question, Delaney, Delaney's our moderator too, guys. So please be kind to her and make her job easy by being nice to each other. Um, let's see, Lynette, Jenny, Aradia, this is Dilliga, Beverly, Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Julie, Jane, Catherine, Tegan, Greg, Ali, um, Utah, Dad's Vintage Garage. I love that. And he's from all the way from Virginia in the USA. And you are headed into fall and we're heading towards spring. <laughs> I hope your winter is kind to you. You've had an awful summer. Cat naps. I grin. I laugh every time. I just love that. That is such a great name. I love it. 
Um, Sylvia, Outback Six, Suzanne, Evelyn. Oh, there's so many of you. And another Karen. Great. Auslander, beautiful. All right, guys. Um, it's August. It was halfway through August. <laughs> And I'm just now doing this video that I had planned for two weeks ago. But anyway, it's not too late to plant for August. Um, I'm still planting in my garden. Uh, it's, it's a continual work in progress because, you know, one of the ways we can save some cash, especially these days, is to grow our own food. And that just makes sense to, you know, spend a few minutes a day to grow one or two things that you eat so that you're not paying those ridiculous supermarket and greengrocer prices. Now, on Cheapskates Chatter, and that's our Facebook group, guys. If you're not a, um, haven't joined the group yet, we'd love to have you. Um, we're just over on Facebook, and I think there's a link underneath me there. If there's not, I'll put one there at the end of the show. I posted um, a YouTube video, not one of mine today about Australian farmers and I, there were two things that are that really the two things that really stood out for me in that video that just made me almost ashamed and then I thought hmm, I'm just as much a hostage as as the farmers are and it was um one scene of a paddock with pumpkins just rotting in the paddock because it was cheaper for the farmer to let them rot than actually fulfill his contract to sell them because it cost him um by the time we took out all these costs for the seed and the water and the fertilizer and the harvesting and the transport and whatever he was making 60 cents a pumpkin where a pumpkin a whole pumpkin where in the supermarket that pumpkin, a whole pumpkin, would be $24. Someone's making a lot of money at farmer's expense and at our expense. So that reinforced to me that there is no way known on God's great green earth that I am going to buy something that I can grow myself. I'm just not going to do it. I have declared war on the fruit and vegetable <laughs> markets. I have declared war on the supermarket produce. I'm not going to pay those overinflated prices. That is just ridiculous. I was just about in tears watching that video today. Um, I hate it. I hate the way we um, we show so much disrespect to the people that we actually need to survive. Now, we ourselves, as in Wayne and I, we have a reasonably large garden in terms of garden beds. And one of my happy things is to spend outside outside time and I dig in the dirt and I pull weeds and I wander around and I look at stuff and you know pick off bits of mint and chew on it and I'll look at the garlic and make sure it's growing well check the potatoes I check the fruit trees all the time I really like it and as a family we've always grown some of what we eat the last couple of years we've extended our garden this year we will we will be extending it more because i think it's important that we become self-sufficient as self-sufficient and as self-reliant as we possibly can be especially with our food so i placed a seed order <laughs> i do a seed order twice a year usually spring and autumn I do a spring summer seed or a seed order and then an autumn winter seed order. So I place my seed order and it's come. It's right here and we'll open it together. I haven't opened it yet. That's another thing that I'm that just puts a smile on my face, knowing that I've got 
food for my family sitting there. But I'm also a bit excited because I'm experimenting with the soil in two of the raised beds to see if it's better than what we've had. Now, I've been reading up on the, no, I'm going to butcher this again. I'm so sorry. But the mit, mit leader, mit leader gardening method. Now, it's very similar, very, very similar to um, what I do, which is what Wayne's grandmother taught me all those years ago. She taught me, you know, how to start the garden off. And because last year's garden was, it was below average and I was a bit disappointed, but I know most people struggled with gardens for one reason or another last summer and speaking to friends in England, speaking to friends in Canada and the USA, everybody is struggling with something in their garden. It's just bad gardening season, I think. So this year, it needs to be better. And not just because last year was dismal. It needs to be better because the cost of fruit and vegetables is skyrocketing. And that's not um, clickbait. That's not me exaggerating. It's pure fact. That's it. It's fact cost of fruit and vegetables is just going crazy. Potatoes, $3.20 a kilo for brushed potatoes. Not even gourmet potatoes, just brushed potatoes, $3.20 a kilo. Every day, the prices of basic fruits and vegetables are going up. Now, for me, the basics are potatoes, carrots, onions, tomatoes, zucchini, lettuce, pumpkin, sweet potato, um, capsicums, cucumbers in summer. There are carrots. There are basics. Celery, although celery is pretty, has stayed pretty stable. There are basics. Throw in some broccoli, some cauliflower, some cabbage. They're pretty normal vegetables in an Australian household. They are just ridiculous prices. Now, they are always ridiculous prices in winter because it's winter and people insist on buying fruit and veg out of season. So you are going to pay for it. But this winter, it has been so much worse. So, so much worse. You know, just ridiculous. Lettuces are still up around $6.99 a for a, and it's a little lettuce. It's not even a nice big iceberg lettuce. So that's just dreadful. There's lots of reasons for this. We've had droughts, we've had floods, we've had howling winds, we've had seed shortages, we've had all sorts of things going wrong. Do you know what all the things are? So we don't need to go over them, but the prices are rising. And it's hurting Australian families, especially with interest rates going up and mortgages going up hundreds of dollars a month. We had a lot of fruit and veggies and the cost of those to buy them is going up. Our grocery budget isn't. Anyway, I was reading up and a couple of articles mentioned starting seeds in the ground earlier up to four weeks before the regular planting time to get a head start on the garden and I went oh that sort of makes sense now you know I like to direct sow I try not to do seedlings unless I absolutely have to so I thought well, that makes sense especially because I've got the little tunnels to put over them to act like little greenhouses Okay, so I can start my tomatoes earlier. Woohoo! And the capsicums and the eggplants. And the, I'm going to try celery again. I know I said I would never try celery again because it takes a lot of space, it takes a lot of water. Well, I'm just going to give it a try. I had an empty spot, so I'm going to give it a try. Um, I'm sowing more beetroot. 
into the garden because I'm doing succession planting. The last two lots are nearly finished. And I'm going to sow more lettuce because we're coming into summer and we love salads. But the lettuce is going to go into a pot simply because lettuce takes a lot of water and it also, while it needs sunshine, it doesn't need, you know, burning, roasting, scorching sun. So if it's in a pot, I can move it easily enough into the shade. So that's what I've been working on in the garden. We've had a lot of rain today. <laughs> we had a lot of rain today. And I looked out the window um, behind me, that's the kitchen window before, and I was, what is what is in that pot? And I went out and I've got raspberry canes in a, a big pot and um, they were floating. We've had so much rain that the pot's not draining. So I had to scoop some water out of the raspberries because I don't want them to rot. Feast or famine, isn't it? Anyway. I heard on the news tonight that we're about to have another wet summer. A bit like last summer and the summer before. There will be lots of rain, quite mild in terms of we won't have the extremes of heat, but we will have lots of rain and more flooding. So that's a bit of a concern because damp like that um, means we have to be aware of fungal diseases too um i'm just reading my notes as i go oh celery I, i've planted 15. um if they all grow brilliant because i can dehydrate it i can freeze it we eat a lot of celery especially in summer um and i use it pretty much all year round leaves too um so if all 15 come up and actually turn into decent sized plants, that will be wonderful. I will be very excited about that. I use the leaves um, in soups and casseroles and pie filling. I dehydrate them and grind them into a powder to use in sauces and gravies or soups or even the cup of soup mix, the cream of anything cup of soup mix. So... I have a jar, it's in the pantry. We just call it the green bar because anything green that I powder goes into that jar. So celery leaves. Um, last week I was doing the turnip leaves, uh, broccoli, silver beet, spinach, anything green that I dehydrate and grind into a powder just goes into the jar and it's just green powder full of nutrients for us. So I'm quite happy about that. Let me see. What else did I want to tell you before I want to get into this box? I'm a bit excited. Oh, I have some potatoes to put in the potato bags. I'm having better success with the potato bags than in the garden for whatever reason. And we are also thinning the strawberries and planting the runners for new plants. We had a really good crop of winter strawberries. I love zipping out in the mornings and picking them to have for breakfast they were just delicious little tiny uh, I think they're called alpine strawberries the little tiny ones they were really really good and um, I've been picking lemons off my little lemon tree which is nice to finally be picking my own lemons now I feed the garden all of it the vegetables the fruit trees the berries flowers every week I feed it with either worm tea or compost tea or if I don't have any of those available, I use seaweed solution and I do it all year round, every week without fail. Now, I know that's not the normal way to feed or fertilise your garden, but it's how I was taught and it actually works. And um, as part of the meat leader gardening thing, they feed their gardens every week. Now, they have a specific mix of their own special brand of stuff to use for feed 
I'm just going to keep doing um, what I've always done with the worm tea, the compost tea, the tea from the Bakashi bucket or whatever. Um, because, you know, when the garden isn't fed, it doesn't do well. It's a bit like us. If we don't eat, we don't have the energy to work. If we don't feed our plants, they don't have the energy to produce. So that's my um, garden plan for August. I've started some of it, nearly finished it. I'm thinking about September already and I hope I get September's video out in time for you. Um, but, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of doing for August. I want to extend the garden, make it so that um, there will always be something to eat in the garden for us. I'll be able to walk out the back door, pick some herbs, move and pick some vegetables, maybe pick some berries or whatever citrus is available or peaches or apples, whatever's in season, pick something that will feed us so that I don't have to rely on supermarkets and greengrocers to provide those things for us because, frankly, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. We're on, a, we're on a budget. We can't afford it. I'd like to know if, you know, Mr. What's-His-Name from the Reserve Bank stops and thinks about these things because, you know, putting the milk up by 60 cents a bottle might not seem much to him if you're on a, you know, six-figure income. But when you're not on a six-figure income, you know, 60 cents can be, it can mean the difference between, three litres of milk and one litre of milk. So it makes a difference. I'd like to sit, I'd love to sit down with these guys and ask them if they really understand what they do in practical terms to Australian families when they do this because they have to put interest rates up because they have to get the economy back under control. Hmm. Anyway, okay. Alrighty. Now, oh, Susan, the dog ate my beetroot. It's like Lacey ate the rhubarb. Oh. She, um, we were out the front on Saturday. Hannah was down, and we were out in the front on Saturday. And when we we're out the front, we put her on the wire thing, on the run thing, so that she can move around and dig in the garden and whatever but not get out past the gate and a neighbor walked past with their their dog and she took off to go and say hello but she took off from behind me and she sort of came around me like that and of course the wire the it's not wire it's plastic stuff it was down low and it caught the back of my heels and down I went. So I've got bruises. It actually dug in through my jeans and my socks. It actually dug in and, and cut the back of my heels. So one day didn't hear me crying because I cried. It hurt. Anyway, let's open this seed box because I have forgotten what I ordered. I sort of know bits of what I've ordered, but um, not everything. Yeah, Karen, Karen says she feeds her garden every week with worm tea. It just makes sense. I figure if I'm hungry, the garden must be hungry. I don't know. It works. Okay, this is the box. Does it say how heavy it is? 1.46 kilos. All right. It fits the way I open this, aren't they? I hope it's not full of packing. I will be very full of packing. No, it's not. What have I got? Oh, yes, I forgot I ordered those. Cool. Okay. I ordered um, three things of Dutch cream, four things of Dutch cream seed potatoes. 
I've never grown Dutch creams before. So they were, they must have been on a clearance or a sale or something. Anyway, I thought I'd give them a try. So I got those. Then I've got um, beans, tomatoes, um, Amish paste tomatoes. If you've never grown Amish paste tomatoes, they're sort of a bigger oblong shape with and they're quite heavy the individual tomatoes are quite heavy and they say they make the best paste but they are really nice to eat too um, and they cook down really well for pasta sauce and two packets of zucchini seeds we grow zucchini all the time and then what's here oh oh video ouch more beans so these beans are stringless pioneer um and they um are sort of like a bush bean they're not a climbing bean they're like a bush bean I have baby sunbeans that, again, are a more compact bush bean. I prefer bush beans to climbing beans. Onions. I love growing our own onions. Carrots. Um, Tommy Toe tomatoes because, you know, that's a nostalgia thing, isn't it? Grow Tommy Toe tomatoes. What else have I got? Um, more onions, red onions and white onions. Um, parsley parsnip. Now, I had not heard of this before. I've not tried it before, so I'm a bit excited about it. It's a compact um, plant too. Um, it says it gets to 30 centimetres high. And it doesn't need a lot of um, doesn't need a lot of water, so that's a good thing too. That's something I've been conscious of for this coming summer is trying to keep the plants that need water together and the plants that don't use a lot in one grouping them, just so that we can keep the water bill down. Lettuce. Butternut pumpkin. Um, it's been a couple of years since we grew pumpkin. I didn't grow them last summer. We did the year before. I, I tend to do a pumpkin every second year simply because the vines take over and we don't have a big backyard anyway. And now I keep putting extra um, raised beds in it. There's even less room. So I'm only doing pumpkin every second year. But I do like butternut. It's easy to grow and it's it's really nice. It's a good all-rounder. I use butternut for um, soup and for baking. Cucumbers. Um, Tigerella tomatoes. They're the striped ones. They're actually really nice. Broccoli. Silver beet. I was right out of silver beet seeds. And peas. And I only got one packet of peas because I'm hoping I will save from what is coming up now, put those in for the next lot and just keep re-going with them. And then I've got more broccoli. Oh, purple carrots. Never tried the purple carrots before. So I thought I'd give them uh, a go. Sweet basil, chives, um, sweet peas. I got sweet peas. They're sort of probably more a sentimental thing and they should have actually been in the ground. I'm coming up. Um, because mum always grew sweet peas, she always grew sweet peas over her um, entrance to her pergola. On either side she had garden beds and she put sweet peas in there and they climb up the trellis. So I saw the seeds and I thought, oh, yeah, they are sweet peas. That's my seed order. 
I'm a bit excited about it. And I totally forgot that I had ordered the potatoes, but now that's what I'll be doing tomorrow because tomorrow is supposed to be a dry day for us here. So we will be able to um, get out and work in the garden. I'm just going to move this down here because I want to show you a couple of things. Um, Kerry uh, posted her carrot harvest over on Cheapskate's chat. And she mentioned about them being too close together. And I said how I space them 50 mil apart and I use a little pencil. I had it here. What did I do with it? I just use a little pencil and I just go plonk to make the hole for the seed. And I do tip in my hand and go and try and put one in each. Sometimes two will go in, in each hole. It takes a little bit longer, but I don't have to thin them. So it's a bit easier that way. So it's like six of one, half a dozen of another. You either take time to plant them or take time to thin them. And carrots being root vegetables, they don't like to be disturbed. So I figure if I can start them from seed in where they're supposed to be and leave them, they will do better. That's my theory anyway. It seems to work. Now the other thing I want to show you, and I can't remember whether I've shown you this, is um, this thing. And you've probably all seen them. But these are great to put over your um, brassicas, your cabbages, your cauliflowers, broccoli, anything that gets the um, cabbage butterfly, the white cabbage butterfly. It's just, it's a food cover, an umbrella food cover. And it just goes up like that. Where's that go? Oh, you pull that up. There we go. They're like two dollars at Kmart. What's wrong with it? That's why it's two dollars at Kmart. That goes in there until it clicks. And that just pop that over your plants. And it keeps the um cabbage moths off them. That keeps the grubs out so you get a better harvest. They're two dollars. Um in the kitchen section at Kmart, they work really, really well. Or you can just cut up an old net curtain and put that over it. Or if you've got some tulle, use that and throw those over the plants. Put some um, skewers or bamboo skewers or something in so that it's not sitting on the plants. There you go. They still get the water from the rain. They still get the sunshine. They just don't get the cabbage moths on them. Anyway, while in Kerry's post, she was talking about um, the thinning and spacing and whatever. And I mentioned that I do it, I do them 50 mil apart. I now have one of these handy dandy things, which is really, really exciting. This was a present. Oh, it looks like a puzzle, doesn't it? It's really handy. And it's actually a seeding square. And it works on the square foot principle, which is a lovely way to garden and to plan your planting. So that all those little coloured circles are where you can space your seeds. Uh, it has a handy dandy little thing that I don't use this little thing I use my pencil still but this um, has measurements on it so that it tells you how deep one inch two inch three inch four inches for deep to poke your holes to put your seeds in if you want to do that on the back is a little funnel because sometimes if you are pouring seed from a packet or a dropper or whatever the little funnel is handy I've not used it but I'm sure it would be very handy I for years I used a cardboard a piece of cardboard that I made up 
from instructions from the Square Foot Garden website with how to make it and measure it out, put the holes in for the different spacing and things. So for years I used that for the Square Foot Garden. It works really, really well. But what is really handy is this. This is a planting guide and it tells you, um, for instance, if you're using the red holes, if you're using the red holes, you put 16 plants to the square foot and that's things like beetroots, carrots, spring onions, leeks, parsnips, radishes, um, mini turnips, that sort of thing all those sorts of things, red hole. So you put that, pop that in your garden like so. Get your handy dandy little pencil, poke your holes, drop your seeds in, pick up your tray, move it over and do keep your spacing like that. Works really well. I used it, I've only had it this winter, it was the first winter I've had it. Um, and I have had fun planting the seeds with it, but it does make spacing your carrots and things so much easier and it tells you like for the um, yellow circles they're bigger things like your beans, um, bok choy, celery, onions, peas, soybeans, spinach, the regular sized turnips that sort of thing go in the yellow holes and then you've got blue for things like that need a bit more space to grow so things like corn garlic lettuce shallots silver bed and then your orange which is the center hole so these are the things that need have a 30 centimeter spacing so things like asparagus your broccoli brussels sprouts cabbages cauliflower eggplant um, capsicums those sorts of things it just makes planning easier um i know they bought it online i don't know where they bought it from but i know it came online and it's really nifty so that's what i use to space out in my garden now it just makes life um it just makes so much easier and my cardboard one was getting dilapidated um kerry uh did the frame come with the planting guide yes yeah the planting guide that spacing thing came with it um it was really um it was a nice surprise it was a present and it was a really nice fun but yeah the planting guide came with it because i know the seed packets will tell you where are they you know here we've got tomatoes and it says um, spacing 60 centimetres. So these grow quite tall, these tomatoes. They grow to 150 centimetres. So these are quite big ones. It'll be interesting in the raised beds. Um, so you know how to space them without thinking. Because before I made up the template that I have, I used to use a ruler. I had a big, long piece of... Um, skirting board I think it was not skirting board door jam stuff um, and I'd marked on it um, centimeters and half centimeters so that I could um, figure out how far apart things were and I used to move that along to get my spacing for planting um, It worked really, really well. So that's what I'm doing in the garden in August. Now I'll be planning for September and October and November. But I want to get the tomatoes in. I normally do tomatoes from the 15th of September, but I'm going to start them. Um, if I don't get them in tomorrow, it will be Monday before I can get back out there. But I want to get them in early and see if that actually works. If direct sowing and starting them earlier means that we'll get tomatoes earlier and have a better season. That might just be the problem. 
Um, so, yeah, there you go. That's what I. Uh, that's what I'm doing in the garden for August and September and October. September will probably be much of the same. There won't be a new seed order. Itching, itching to um, put them. How do you store your seeds, guys? I keep them in the envelopes and I just have a little wooden box that I stack them in. Um, oh, yes, this. Now, someone was asking me about the solar lights that we have in the garden to keep the... Um, possums it's working really really well this is these these now this is a new one that i picked up um reject shop it came from um and we use them when we're camping we sort of put them around um, in the ground around the van and where we sit and whatever so we've got a bit of light at night time um but they have worked wonders in the garden. So we've put them in and because they're raised beds, they just sort of go in really easily. And I've got the light sort of tilted pretty much straight ahead. And there's one at each end. So they face each other. So there's a lot of light in there. And when we get sunshine, they charge up really quickly um, and seem to keep... Um, keep their charge for quite a while so well certainly they're still shining when I go to bed so that works too so for someone who I've forgotten who it was um, um, that's really um, really really sorry I just saw a comment here a blind friend had a fabulous garden and his seed and seedlings were so evenly placed and thriving. His method was a square piece of galvanised mesh used for bird cages. Small mesh, yep, larger. So it worked the same way and he could do it by touch. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Krista, it's very windy here so cucumbers will have to grow flat in the ground and tomatoes in pots where it's sheltered. Is it windy all year round? August, August and September are our windy months here, usually. But um, but we can get wind at any time. Jane, um, Jane's tomatoes are ripening now. Yummy. Um, fruit fly get all the largest soft fruits. Oh, what did I see as a solution for fruit fly? At the time, I thought it was a brilliant... Oh, I know what it was. I thought it was a brilliant idea, but very expensive. But I've since figured out we could do it ourselves. And it was the little... Um, oh, what are they called? Little bags, little like gift bags, but they're um, not um, tool. They're... gone anyway little fabric bags and they slipped them or well, they had quite big ones too to go over the bigger fruits slipped them over the fruit and just pulled the things the strings to close them the tree looked quite odd but it worked now if you had to buy those it would be very expensive but um if you could make them if you've got the fabric and can make them that would be um, really good, really, really good. I'm going backwards here, guys, sorry. Yes, Karen's got veggie pods. I keep looking at those and thinking they would be so good. They would be so good. And I think, no, we've got too much money invested in our garden as it is for what we've got. Um Yes, the cows will eat the pumpkins. <laughs> the cows will eat the pumpkins, but they'll still grow. Pumpkins are pretty hardy. Um, you know, it grows um, 
It grows from compost. So, you know, it does. It, it doesn't. Um, pumpkins don't need to be pampered. Um, silver beet seeds are easy to save yes most seeds are easy to save we need to do a bit on seed saving um i'm no i don't fertilize them as such i just feed them just give them a drink of worm tea um and water it in so it's quite diluted um parsnips are long and skinny anyway the the fleshiest bit is the probably top two inches from the leaves down and then they taper off quite drastically for parsnips um so um, no i haven't had a problem with them they're still parsnips parsnips and oh, i love mash mash parsnip with a little bit of butter and a little bit of pepper is really good. Roasted parsnip is really nice. Roasted parsnip soup is delicious. If you roast your parsnip and you've got a little bit of stock, you whiz it in your food processor till it's smooth and then just a little bit of cream, yeah, salt and pepper, it is really good. You can throw in some um, garlic if you want to really really nice but you roast your parsnips so they go all caramelized and delicious yum yum um, where was the seed box from my seeds that was a diggers club um, order I tend to buy most of my seeds from diggers club then I search around for other ones but I like digger seeds. I have I have a good um, a good track record with seeds and seedlings from diggers. Some of the others I've not. Um, Nicola are a nice potato, Jane. Um, thank you, Krista. I wasn't okay on Saturday afternoon. I was crying because it hurt. And then, of course, because it's the back of my heel, every time I tried to, um, if I put my stool up, put my feet up on the stool, it will catch the back of them. <laughs> but it's fine now. Jolly dogs. Oh, and one more thing. We've had a week of it. Friday, when I walked in the front door, I went, oh, it smells damp in here now it hadn't been raining it smells damp and i was thinking oh, i've got washing on the clothes horse maybe it's the washing anyway it seemed to go away after a little while so i thought oh, maybe it was just one of the boys that had a sh just had a shower and the bathroom was still still getting that steamy smell from the bathroom or something we we're having visitors on sunday we we're having visitors to stay arriving thursday so and we we're having visitors on sunday last sunday and I was getting ready to do some baking on Sunday morning and I opened the cupboard under the sink and went down to the bottom shelf and I pulled out the basket and, oh, it must have been nearly, well, probably two cups of water came pouring out. And I, oh, no. Because this is a new kitchen. This is a, not even two years old. What's gone wrong now? Well, we Wayne, we couldn't find the leak. We could not. We dried it all out. We could not find the leak. Could not find that leak. And I had stuff everywhere, so I gave up on baking. We just had a cup of tea, and we had stuff everywhere, all over the place. And then I said, "It's still leaking because we dried everything out." It's still leaking. Where is it coming from? We dried everything out and I'd run my hand over it and it was wet. We could not find where it was coming from. It was coming from the dishwasher hot water connection, which is the teeniest, tiniest little knob. It's probably, I don't know, maybe 15 mil across this little tiny knob. 
and there was a washer in there that had failed. He would not think so much water would come out of that little thing. I was like, yeah. So poor Wayne, he tried to fix it with a washer that he had and it didn't work. So he had to go to the hardware and it was just, oh, talk about um, chaotic. And then, of course, in the middle of all that, our visitors arrived, which was fine. But um, he was hilarious. We had, we had a week of it or a weekend of it, things going kerfuffled. Um, all right. Prep setting life says, I'm trying to garden cheap in the way our elders did. So far, so good. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. We don't need, um, I think what I like is, um, like about this mit, mit leader, mit letter, gardening method, is it doesn't take anything fancy. You just start on the ground. You dig the ground over and you throw in some lawn clippings and you throw in some leaves and you throw in a bit of whatever and sand. Throw in some sand and mix it all up really, really well. Plant your whatever, plant your seeds, feed it every week and the garden grows. And I think that's what I like about it because that's how I was taught to garden. It works really, really well. Um, Kmart has a rainbow photo container, $15. Okay. Well, that's for sorting of seeds, obviously. Yeah. A good idea i just keep them i've just got a box and i just put them in the box i try to put them in seasons so spring summer autumn winter and keep like with like so i know what i've got and i try to keep a list so i know what needs to be replenished uh, okay all righty All right, guys, okay, 8.23, we might finish unless anyone's got any more questions. Oh, how do I spell that garden method? Good question. Let me see. Um, uh, it's M-I-T-T-L-E. I D E R M I double T L E I D E R. Um, it's been around for a while, quite a while, from what I could um, um, find out from reading about it. But what caught my eye was it was just the way Wayne's granny had told me to do the garden. You just feed it every week you get hungry your garden gets hungry and direct sowing is is much more convenient and I really think it is I like direct sowing I, I, hmm, I like direct sowing it works really well okay uh, all right Um, okay all righty so yes please thumbs up if you wouldn't mind if you're not already subscribed please click that subscribe button we would love to have you as a regular a member of our little gang and if you are subscribed you are notified every time we go live Um, and the share I knew there's something else the share link if you think someone might benefit from knowing about this video or any of the other videos on our channel use the share button 
to send them the link. And if you are planning a bigger garden to try and save some money this year or you're doing something really nifty in your garden this year, let me know in the comments below what your garden plans are for the coming spring and summer. Share them with us. We all want to learn and we all want to know how to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. Thank you for joining me. I will be back next week, next Tuesday of a live show, but there will be a short video tomorrow, another one on Thursday, and then a cooking video on Friday for you. Have a great week, everyone, and happy cheap skating. I'll see you next week. Bye.